Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. Hello, I'm Joey McWilliams, and I am privileged today to get to be joined on the summit by Coach John Hegerly of the Jamestown Jimmies in his 13th season with the program. Coach, you start off the year with a 4-0 record. I'm sure that's what you hope for every single year, but you get it done. Great way to start. You haven't lost a set yet. Can you tell us how things are going here in 2021 and, and celebrate the fact that we're playing volleyball in the fall? Yeah, absolutely. Good morning, Joey. Thanks for having me on. Um, you know, certainly uh, uh, it just seems like the years just go faster and faster. So, you know, I tell my players all the time, it's kind of like that movie Groundhog Day. Uh, they move on, they graduate, and the next year comes. And and so I, I always hope things slow down when it gets to this point. Uh, we had obviously, yeah, good preseason, good way to start the season. Uh, players always like taking a trip. Uh, we've been to a lot of different places around the country for for a week, we get to do some things uh, in the locale that we're at, but most importantly, we play some good volleyball. And so, uh, yeah, we were excited about last week and, and starting the, the season off strong with a four four wins in, in that week down in Florida. Well, that's the way to get it done, but that's the way also to continue the way that you all have been doing things up there in Jamestown, specifically the last couple of years, 30 win seasons, back-to-back -back years, making it to the national semifinals in the NAI tournament, back-to-back -back years. It looks like the program is is going well and and just as you would plan, except I know you want to be winning that last game of the season, if at all possible. You want to get to that point, but uh, t tell us how the program is doing. Yeah, you know, uh, I tell people all the time I'm, I'm incredibly blessed to work with the people I do. Um, when, when a program gets to this point, um, you just look at it and you, some, sometimes you say, I wonder, how did we get here? Uh, and um, I'm smart enough, hopefully, to know that it's not all about uh, the coaching staff. There's a whole bunch of things that has to take place, a lot of variables involved, and most of them I have no control over. So first of all, we have a tremendous university with tremendous support. Um, we're in a tremendous location. I love being in Jamestown, North Dakota. Some people might think I'm crazy, but it's wonderful here. Uh, and then we've been able to get just a lot of great blue collar, um, meat and potatoes, lunch pail, roll up your sleeves types of athletes from rural North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota. Uh, we have a, a player from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, but those players, that uh, they just understand what it's like uh, to be part of something bigger than themselves. Some of our players come from families with 8, 9, 10, 11 kids. You know, obviously, they know life wasn't about them. And, and because of it, they come with a humility but also a strength that leads to just being great teammates. And so, you know, when we look at the last number of years, and, and certainly it's in the 13 years I've been here, it's just, we call it kind of perpetual ascension. It's just kept getting better and better and better. And there's a lot of people that put um, some blood, sweat, and tears into the program. But uh, the, the thing I'm most proud of is just the character of our players in our team. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of times you look at this too, and you say, well, it just is by chance. And I don't believe it's by chance. God has a hand in this. You know, we pray about, hey, bring the right players here. Bring the players here that are going to grow here and and be significantly better when they're done with this program than they were when they came in. And so hopefully when we look at that, we can see that happening and we do. And, and so now it's almost like I'm, I sit back and I go, OK, don't mess this up. <laughs> so it's just been wonderful. It's just been a great experience. And uh, like I said, I'm just blessed to be part of it. I like that phrase, Coach, perpetual ascension, and I, th I think that's really cool. Well, you know, there there are five children in the McWilliams household, so I, I, I'm settled with that. Ten or eleven, I think that that may be a little yeah. bit more than, than I can handle. We're speaking now with Coach John Hegerly from Jamestown here on Midwest Sports Net, and I do encourage you to please subscribe to the channel. We do a lot of coverage of small college sports and more. Coach, you know, where, where you mentioned don't, don't mess it up, and and I appreciate the humility in that. However, I do want to acknowledge the fact that you were named the coach of the year last year. And I think that there probably is a little bit more to it than don't mess it up that goes into an honor like that. Congratulations on that honor. I appreciate it. It's, it's certainly an incredible honor, something that really shocked me and caught us off guard. And I always tell our team that they only give that to, it's really a, a, a team award. It's the team that we, we always says has the greatest flavor to them. And so if we can have a great flavor, then the coach gets the award. So, but I really appreciate it. It's a great honor uh, to be chosen by my colleagues for that. Well, it was a, a team last year that, that helped you to receive that honor. And one of the things about that coach is the fact that you return so many players 
from last season's team, a team that went 30 and two again, made it to the national semifinals. Uh, how do you continue something like that? And, and how do you keep encouraging them knowing, okay, we know we can do it now uh, to, to keep that edge all the time with a group like that, that's returning. Yeah, that's a, that's a big challenge, Joey, because it's, it's easy for our team to get stagnant. Um, you know, and, and, um, our men's basketball coach, Danny Neville called me the other day, we were down in Florida and, and he said, Oh, I had this great coach. He said, or this great, great quote that I want to, that I want to share with you. And he said, it's, uh, you've never arrived is the quote that he said, or something like that, but it has to do with, Hey, you know, we're, we can't approach this like we've arrived somewhere. And so yeah. our job is to continue to be hungry, uh, to continue to, to foster an environment that's fresh. You know, we're doing some different things and practices than we've done in the past, trying to, to play at a different level, trying to uh, take care of some of the things and, and trying to challenge our players to get excited about growing in different areas versus staying the same. Because it's easy maybe just to sit there and, and say, hey, we're good enough or whatever that is. And, I, and I, it's just no fun doing that. The fun part is the growth. And to challenge us and to say, hey, let's try something a little bit different, a little bit new, a little bit fresh and tweak something a little bit so that our players get excited about coming to practice and being there and working on some things. So that's the challenge for us as a coaching staff. Well, coach, then it, it becomes even more personal, too, because uh, among those players that you have on your team, you return a couple of All-Americans, a couple of juniors that you bring back. And one of them has your last name and Callie Hegerly, a junior right side playing for you all. What's it like coaching her then? And, and again, another congratulations for an All-American honor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously I'm pretty close to Callie. She's my niece. It's my twin brother's daughter. Um, watched her grow up, coached her a little bit at camps, uh, wanted her to come to, to UJ, uh, but she was good enough to go the D1 route and, and just didn't have the experience she necessarily wanted at that route. And so, um, Lo and behold, a year and a half after she uh, starts her college career, she's transferring to UJ, and uh, she was a little bit nervous about it. I told her, I said, you know what, Kelly, I know you don't know the players. You're transferring in mid-year. Every Thursday night, you have a standing dinner at our house. You know, we live <laughs> six blocks from the college. Well, she's been here a year and a half now, and she has yet to be over to our house for dinner, and, and that's because I called her the first Thursday, and she said, Coach, I'm good. I'm going out with the team. I'm having dinner with the team. And so she's just been a tremendous fit um, just to see her with the joy she plays with and the joy she lives her life with. It's just been wonderful to be part of that. And, and just the, the way that we've become a lot closer now as, as a uncle and niece. And uh, it's just something I really treasure. Another all American coming back to be a part of the team. Another junior is Anna Holen. And again, with that, that kind of talent coming back, obviously that, that says good things for your program, but getting to coach then two all Americans returning, is that a, an additional challenge and talk about Anna's play? Yeah. You know, Anna, I, uh, my very first match here in 2009, her, she and her little sister, and I, I don't even know how old they were, maybe seven and, and five or something like that. <laughs> they came in an hour before the match and the gym was empty and they started peppering. And my jaw just dropped because they peppered probably better than some of my college players. And I remember my assistant came in and I said to Connie, I said, Connie, if I'm here when they're old enough to play, we have, they have to be Jimmy's. Well, fortunately enough, there, I think they had eight or nine siblings that uh, went <laughs> here and their parents went here. And so uh, they ended up coming here and, and just tremendous, tremendous teammates. Um, Anna's just a, a She's so talented in so many ways, whether it's musically. Uh, she was the um, uh, player of the year for basketball out of high school in North Dakota, player of the year in volleyball, uh, but just incredibly humble. And so to watch her play um, grow as she's been here. And, and one of the best parts about her is she always wants to get better. She always is trying to come in and work on different things and get better. And some of the things I just are just high risk things. And I remember one match I said, Anna, would you stop trying to do that? <laughs> You just make an error every time. So the next time she went up and did it and succeeded and looked at me and pointed at me with a big smile. And, and so <laughs> a, a player you just love because she's got such a, a growth mindset in what she does. And and so, yeah, it's it's a blessing to be part of that as well. 
Well, it is fun to follow you all, and and it should be fun over the next few weeks to follow you all as well. This weekend, you're heading to Dickinson State, Dickinson State Triangular, and then following Labor Day, you head down to Bellevue. A lot of ranked teams in that one. That should be uh, a fun festival to get to to follow uh, with all the teams that are participating there. And then a tough GPAC schedule. And you know, sometimes I say conference schedules are tough. It's a tough GPAC schedule. Yeah, it is. I think we have uh, five teams in the, ranked in the top 10. And uh, it's one of the things I love about the GPAC is every night, it's such a great, a great battle on the court. And um, I have tremendous respect for the coaches in the league and, and the schools that are here. And so we just absolutely love being in the conference. It's really brought out the best in us. And we think, you know, that's one of our missions as a team and as players is to bring out the best in each other. And, and the conference certainly does that in us. And so um, we always look forward to, to the, the season. Uh, obviously, we play Rocky Mountain and Dickinson on Saturday. And, and Rocky Mountain's got a great tradition and has got a great team. And then we go down to Bellevue and play three uh, ranked teams, a couple top 10 teams. And so um, we there's nothing better than that. That's what college athletics is all about. And, and we want to go out and play the best and see what it brings out in us. And, and hopefully, uh, hopefully it does bring out good things. Well, Coach, then I, I look forward to following you along. The perpetual ascension, that's the yeah. path that uh, Jamestown is on. And right now, number two in the country. So that ascension, uh, at least at least from this point, you don't have that far to go. So, no. but, <laughs> but continue. It's to not grow. that far, but it takes a tremendous effort, and it takes some things to to go our way for that to happen. So, well, coach, success to you all this season. We will continue to follow you all definitely, and uh, I appreciate so much you taking time with us today, Coach John Hagerly, the Jamestown Jimmies, number two in the country right now, defending coach of the year, and. Thank you again, sir, for being with us here on Midwest Sportsnet. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it, and I appreciate everything you do for small college and small schools. So it's wonderful to be on the show.